What is good, Celtics fans? It's your boy, Adam Taylor, joined by Mr. Tim Shields. As usual, my co-host in this Vitamin C's. No, we'll start that again. What up, Celtics fans? Welcome back to the Vitamin C's. What is it? Is it a show? I would say it's a show. It's it's an experience. It's a journey. What's up, Celtics fans? Welcome back to your daily dose of Celtics content with the Vitamin C's. I'm Adam Taylor. This is Mr. Tim Shields. And today we're going to talk about the enigma, the mystery, the theory, the conspiracy theory that is Romeo Langford. And I say conspiracy theory because I genuinely don't know what the hell's going on right now. This guy missed the Summer League finals with yet another injury. And I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith. Now, if anybody knows me, if you follow my work over at Celtics blog, on the Celtics Blog Podcast, if you follow any of my written work, you will know I have been one of the biggest Romeo Langford proponents, literally in the Celtics verse. I feel like I've been banging that drum for so long and trying to buy all the stock in Romeo Langford that right now I'm the only one on that hill. And I used to be prepared to die on it, and I'm starting to change that mentality a little bit. Tim, how are you feeling, man? Another injury for Romeo? It's tough, right? So I've I, I've kind of been souring on Romeo for a little bit now, and I don't I don't dislike him and I don't blame him, but there is an element of injury prone, and I think they said it was a wrist. I don't know if it's a wrist sprain. I don't imagine it was something serious, but there were five summer league games, and this is a guy who's yet to play through a good chunk of a season. His rookie year, he dealt with the wrist injury. You know, you remember the shooting drills with him with the ping pong paddle taped to his hand while his hand was healing. And he's just never gotten healthy. Even with the bubble, you know, he ended up having to leave early. They had him get surgery last year. And we saw glimpses, like glimmers of it towards the end of the season where he looked promising. And there were some highlights of him against the Brooklyn Nets in the gentleman's sweep. So, like, we kind of got our hopes up. And then now he's missing two out of five summer league games. This is a guy who needs the minutes, who needs the time on the floor, and he's just not there. So again, you, you're having this ugly injury bug rear its head. So it's just a matter of how much time do you give him? Do you, do you take another roll of the dice with him this year, or do you move him while you still can? There is so a lot of questions around him. So here's where my head's at. Mm-hmm. Do you have another injury riddled player, an injury prone player in Robert Williams? There's a huge difference between Robert Williams and Romeo Langford, and that difference is impact. You put Romeo Langford on that floor, there are times where he looks like a passenger. He's just kind of sitting himself in the corner. He doesn't seem to be inserting himself within offensive possessions. You put Robert Williams on the floor, there's a legit impact. You know Robert Williams is on that floor, whether that be because of his blocks, whether it's because of the rim threat that he poses, as a roll man or as a a vertical spacer, you know Robert Williams is there. So you're more willing to roll the dice with Robert Williams' long-term health because you get that impact when he's on the floor. Romeo is not giving you that. Romeo is giving you flashes, and that's great, but you're not healthy enough to develop on those flashes. You're constantly injured. As I say, I'm a big Romeo fan. I personally believe he has the highest ceiling on the Celtics out of all the young guys, but he also has the lowest floor. And that's a problem because when you've got the lowest floor out of all of the young rotation, we're talking Peyton Pritchard, Aaron Neesmith. I'd even say, no, I'm not going to go there. I was going to say Carson Edwards, but I'd be I thought you are going to throw Grant in there. Grant Williams too. I think he's got a lower floor than Grant Williams has because Grant Williams is more of a basketball IQ guy. I think that Robert Williams as well, we can throw in there. Romeo Langford could be the best out of all of those guys. Quite clearly, he's got the athleticism. He's got the pedigree. You know, you don't win Mr. Indiana basketball for nothing during high school. Like, we're talking one of the meccas of basketball. You have to be elite to at least even win that as a high school player. But these injuries are slowing down and halting that progression. And if that continues, Romeo Langford might be one of the best players to come out of high school and college that just never made anything of himself in the NBA. And it's really frustrating for me because I've got such high hopes. And at the moment, I just think that whether he, maybe he needs to be in a different situation. Maybe he doesn't need to be with the Celtics. But that would make more sense if he was healthy to get minutes and he wasn't getting minutes. He's just not healthy to get those minutes. It, it's in, it's incredibly frustrating, man. 
Yeah, and I think that the Celtics would be ready to throw minutes at him. I, I think the Celtics have shown, especially recently, that they are willing to invest minutes into guys that they think can offer them something. You know, Aaron Neesmith had a really tough go in the beginning of his rookie year last year. And you saw him get healthy. You saw him get right. And the more he hustled, the more he earned minutes. And you just kind of saw him erupt towards the end of the season. And now it's like not even a question of like, okay, well, Aaron Neesmith's going to have a role in this rotation. And you would say the same thing for Romeo Langford if he were healthy. Because I think what we've seen in flashes, it's not a matter of, okay, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have the stuff. Like he's a flop. He's a bust. Like it's never a question of if he has the talent. It's a matter of if he can get enough minutes underneath his belt in order to develop those skill sets. You know, we've talked about him potentially being a backup ball handler or, you know, potentially using him as like uh, essentially like a, like a, almost like a point forward kind of situation because he's got size for him and he's a really good slasher but we've just never had those opportunities to really see him out on the floor. And even with Rob Williams, like Rob Williams, like you said, he's a high impact player. Like, you know, when he's out there, he's going to make an impact to the point of when Rob was out, we were like, okay, now they're really screwed because he's going to be able to change the situation. If he's on the floor, Romeo Langford, we've never said that about, and I want to, you know, I, I want to believe that all of these guys who get brought in are going to do great. It's the same thing with Carson Edwards. Like it brings me no joy to be like, this guy just doesn't have it. And maybe, yeah, a change of scenery might be good. But again, going back to Romeo, it, it's not a matter of change of scenery because it's not like he's not going to get minutes here. Like the only reason he doesn't get playing time is because he's literally not able to play because it's surgery recovery or uh, rehabbing or, you know, he just for some reason has some kind of health thing going on. The poor kid got COVID last year. So it's just kind of like what's going to give like some, something's got to break here. Something's got to roll the right way for him. And it's just a matter of whether or not we're going to see it happen here in green, or if he's going to get dealt as part of a package deal for another guy who can come in and contribute. That's the thing though. What, what value does he have on the trade market right now? Like we're talking about, Oh, he might get packaged. Well, he's a throw in at that point and you're throwing mm -hmm. in a guy with a high ceiling, but he just can't stay healthy. It's a really weird situation to find yourself in. And I agree. I think that, the more he misses time, the more he doesn't play, the fur the further he's going to find himself struggling to break into the rotation. And right now, I've got him as one of the tier three rotation guys, not because of talent, but just because everybody else on that roster, I feel like are more reliable. So for me, my starting five personally would be Marcus Smart, Aaron Neesmith, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford. Then I'd want my bench five of Schroeder, Pritchard, Richardson, you can, you know, if you want to try Grant Williams at the four, you can, but probably Jabari Parker just because he can get his own baskets and he can get his own shot off. And then Robert Williams when healthy. That That is my core 10 guys in the regular season rotation. So Romeo Langford doesn't feature there. Romeo Langford is now my 11th or 12th guy because I just can't rely on you to be healthy. And there's no point going through a season building a system around Romeo being your 7th or 8th guy off the bench for, for the bottom to fall out halfway through the year and then have to try and reintegrate him closer to the playoff time. We've seen it time and time again. And I remember writing this earlier, and I want to pull it up on screen now, just looking at how many games Romeo's played and just think he's entering his third NBA season at this point. So as you can see, he's played a total of 66 NBA games. That includes playoff games. I think 11 of those were playoff games. For reference, Nee Smith, who came into the season last came into the NBA last season, has already played 51. Five of those were playoff games. Peyton Pritchard has played 71, with five of those being playoff games. So how can you really justify giving Langford more minutes than guys that are just as experienced as him with no injury history? So he has to be a trade target, but no value. You're losing no matter what way you look at it, unless he gets healthy. And I think Neesmith is a really good comparison because Neesmith came into the league following a season where he broke his foot. So he was coming back and trying to get his legs underneath him too. So it's not a matter of like, oh, there are other guys who just like came in healthy and just had like the best of luck. Like Aaron Neesmith had to crawl through the mud last year. He had it tough trying to get any kind of semblance of game going for him at the NBA level. And he was a guy that was advertised as a shooter. So he really, really had a tough going. And then finally, like, 
that switch just flipped. We saw him in the summer league too. Like he looks great. He's playing great. And like you said, I, I've thought of him as a potential plug in at the two spot. I think if you're going to keep Richardson off your bench and obviously you're going to keep Schroeder on the bench as well, um, that really shores up your bench unit. And I think Neesmith can play off of your primary ball handlers and Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart. Al Horford being in there too is going to be really interesting because he's a great passer. But I, I wish we could say the same thing about Romeo Langford. And it, it is very frustrating, right? Because, you know, you know what he's capable of. We or at least we think we know what he's capable of. And we want to see that come to fruition so often because these kind of talents, a guy who goes out and does what he does at the high school and college levels, there's a lot of promise and hype to that. You know, he was one of the highest, what well, he's one of the highest ranked high school players going into Indiana. And then yeah, poof, nothing at the NBA level yet. And it's frustrating. I just wonder when does that time expire? When does the clock run out on him? The biggest concern for me in terms of how he's going to get opportunities is he was earning minutes because of defense, because he was playing on a team that had perimeter defense issues. There were holes within that perimeter defense last season. There were holes within that perimeter defense to end the season before. We know that it was quite porous. Marcus Smart was under a lot of pressure. It felt like Jalen Brown had took a step back as an on-ball defender. It made sense to give Romeo time on the rotation off the bench because he could guard one through three, one through four on the perimeter. That's not the case this year. This year, the team looks to be absolutely stacked with point of attack defenders and defensive stoppers. So your route into the rotation now as, a, as another defensive piece, well, it's not such a clear track anymore because now Jason Richardson is going to be a very good defensive piece. Dennis Schroeder is a good defensive piece. If Jalen Brown comes back and is rediscovered how to play on ball defense, Jalen Brown's going to be a fantastic defensive piece. Jason Tatum is an off ball defender. There's so many parts. I mean, even Aaron, even Peyton Pritchard can play defense. He's pesky. I'm not saying he's a great defender, but he'll put effort in. Aaron Neesmith plays like a wrecking ball. He's my, he's the he's the Boston Celtics Miley Cyrus. He comes in like a wrecking ball. Like what? Do you, you know what I'm saying? No, dude. The, the 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 path that he had before into this rotation no longer exists. And that's another concern for me because you can't hang your hat on just defense anymore because there's multiple guys that can do that. They also have secondary skills on the offensive end, and we're not seeing anything on that side of the floor from Romeo at this point. I think it's pretty awesome. Like it's such a it's a complete like 180 from what it was last year, where if Marcus Smart was out or Rob, you know, Rob Williams was out, your your defense just absolutely sputtered and it was just full of holes. Now it's the exact opposite. And I think that's a really good point when it comes to discussing Romeo because there was a point in time where like, wow, his defense is great. Like when he came back and, you know, he was nursing back from uh, COVID, you were like, okay, great. This is awesome. Like he's hitting the ground running. Um, they literally barely eased him in and he was getting minutes and he was making an impact on that side of the ball. But yeah, with Aaron Neesmith developing his abilities and now he's looking like a pretty solid two-way young player to develop, that's going to pose problems because he's going to be stealing minutes away from Langford and it's hard to justify trying to give minutes to a guy when you've got experienced guys in the system. Richardson being an ad, like he's going to be a big piece for them. You know, you've got Jabari who can run at the three and the four or you can use him as a small ball five. Like there are other wing players that you can turn to now that are going to be a lot more stable than putting Langford in there. And it's not that, you know, you don't want to give him minutes because he's going to hemorrhage points or something like that. But the main reason why he was getting those minutes was, okay, well, we really need a guy who can go out there and guard multiple positions and can handle the ball. Well, you've got a couple other guys that can do that, who do it at a better level, have more experience. So you know exactly what you're trying to get. And you've got a coach in Ime Udoka who's worked with a couple of these guys and knows how to get the most out of them. So like, it's really going to be difficult for Langford to come into this situation if he's not healthy to break this rotation. Like if he hits the ground again, like the start of this season and he's not healthy and he misses the first 10, 15 games. Uh, he's done. He's done. He might not even, we don't even know if he's going to get to that point still. Like there's still changes and we're going to talk about it in a later episode, but like they've got exemptions to use still. Like there's going to be chances that he might get packaged somewhere and that it sucks. Cause you know, you use a lottery pick. You, you need to play him. That was a big thing we said about him. 
you got to give lottery players time to play in order to develop to what you want them to be. I mean, you can't play if you're not if you're yeah. medically unfit to play. I mean, it's not even this isn't even a coaching issue. This is just a, a durability issue. I can't you can't really blame Romeo because if your body's getting injured, your body's getting injured. That's not on you. That sometimes that's just the way it is for certain guys. They're made of glass, they're injury prone. Perhaps it's the way the training staff are pushing him. Maybe a move to another team could be what ignites that for him. Maybe a trade would make him realize like I'm in real trouble of actually falling out of this rotation right now. So there's a lot of different ways to um to look at this, and that's a big problem for me. Um, what I will say is this. If he doesn't fix himself up this year and find a way to stay healthy, and this isn't just Langford, I think this is going to be partly on Robert Williams too, but to a lesser extent due to that um, impact that we spoke about. Romeo is going to be behind Jay Rich. He's going to be behind Neesmith. Then he's behind, obviously, Tatum and Brown. He's got. He's not going to get minutes, and he's not going to develop. And the last thing you want is for a third-year guy who was a lottery pick to have to get packaged to go to a random team, let's just say Orlando for argument's sake, and figure it out there and then come back to haunt you in two or three years when he's actually good. And that's my biggest concern. But right now, I'm still high on Romeo as a theory, as what he could develop into and become. But... I'm losing faith every single time I see another injury update. And it stinks, right? Because I feel like I haven't seen anything on the floor that's made me genuinely say he doesn't have it. Like there have been more moments. Like he threw, he had that nasty dunk where he just attacked the rim. Like that was insane. Like he was so aggressive and getting to the cup. You, you see him move with the ball and attack and slash. Like, you know, he's capable of doing. And it was exciting. Like that was probably like the dunk of all summer league. Like he had an incredible dunk. It came off a of Bruno Fernando pass and just posturized somebody. But now it's kind of like, okay, well, are we going to be able to see that again? Like now he's out with a wrist injury. We, I don't think we've gotten any other update than, Hey, yeah. Romeo Langford's not back in the game. He's, he missed two games of summer league and, we got no kind of update where his health is at, which is both good and bad. Because if it was really, really bad, we would know by now. But if it were just like a little something, it was just like, oh, he just tweaked it. He's fine. They would have said something. And who knows? You know, Brad Stevens is supposed to have a press conference at 10. I can only assume that it's going to be just updating the media, um, announcing the signings of Schroeder, uh, the return of Ennis Cantor, as well as the acquisition of Josh Richardson. So that's going to probably be what it is i called um, him jason earlier that was a brain fart on my part i, do there, I mean there was a jason richardson so there you was know. Do you know what it is man sometimes i'm just speaking that fast that the name that sounds most logical in my brain comes out of my mouth and i'm like i remember a jason richardson it was jason richardson it wasn't it was josh my mistake please don't hate me <laughs> no i think that's all minor in terms of transgressions i don't know somebody will see it and be like oh my god he said jason <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, dude, man. It's just I don't know. I mean, it sucks because I, I feel like Langford's one of those guys that you can root for. He just seems like a, a genuinely good player, like a good kid. And I just not seeing it click is just kind of frustrating. And I, I don't know where he's at mentally. I imagine he's probably frustrated too. I think that we can leave it here because there is no answer. Now, there's going to be videos we do and shows that we do, and this will develop into more of a show at the moment. It's a bit of a podcast. We have plans to make it more glitzy and showy, but right now, w w there's no answer, so we need to leave it open-ended anyway, and I think the open-ended thing is the only way we're going to know what Romeo can be, how he can develop, and how he fits in within this roster is to play. If he doesn't play, then we all know what he's going to be. Cannon fodder for a trade. It's that simple. And, and unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be. You're either, you're either impacting winning, you're providing depth in, within the rotation, or you're a throwing to something that could become someone that can do one of those things, impact winning, provide depth. At the moment, there's Carson Edwards and Romeo Langford at the moment are two guys on this roster that provide neither depth nor impact to winning. So both of them should be expecting to get traded at some point. And with that, I would like to say, we hope you enjoyed your daily dose of Celtics content. 
please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I would be very interested to see your thoughts on Romeo Langford and what you're expecting, whether it be a trade, whether it be he just sits on the bench and rots. There's a comment section. Let's use the comment section, man. As usual, you can find me over at Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and you're on YouTube, so you know I'm here, at Adam Taylor NBA. You can find Mr. Tim Shields on pretty much just Twitter, at Tim Shields NBA. You know, Tim's a, a man of a man of many things, but not many social medias. That's uh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find me on Reddit, at Adam Taylor NBA. Uh, we will catch you again tomorrow, where we're going to be discussing Tatum's 2K. Yeah, I think we're going to do Tatum's 2K rating and we'll probably dive into what was actually said at the Brad Stevens press conference because it'll be a daily dose of Celtics content. Monday through Friday, coming straight to you from YouTube. Catch you again. Namaste. Cheers.